Hello there. Um, I want to come on here and talk about what Jesus did on the cross for us. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Um, so I'm going to read one of the best chapters in the Bible that describes what Jesus did for us. This is Isaiah 53. <clears throat> Sorry for the movement. Um, who hath believed our report? Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. Wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. This is talking about Jesus. He hath no form of commonliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him physically. He is the spot that that's what it means physically. There's another scripture that talks about that somewhere, I think. He is despised and rejected of men. Me too. You know, I'm going to kind of like talk in between the scriptures. I'm not adding to it. I'm just talking because I got some stuff to say. I like to talk about the word of God. So. um, You know, we're going to be despised and rejected of men too. Just like Jesus was. He told us that. He said, he said they hated you. They're going to. They hate me. They're going to hate you too. But it's not us that they, they hate. It's the light. It's the Father that they hate. They hate the Lord. They love darkness rather than light. And we carry the light so people hate us. Despised and rejected of men. Oh, so much rejection. Oh, how I have gone through so much rejection since Jesus. People, but it's okay. Uh, I'm blessed. A man of sorrows. You too, probably, if you walk, if you really walk with the Lord. If you really are turning from your sins and living whole, pursuing holiness and diligently seeking the Lord, you'll go through what he went through. And acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs. Ooh, this is what he did on the cross. He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I think it's right here on the cross. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, and I googled chastisement. The definition of, ch of chastisement is punishment. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You know, a lot of people, you know, use that scripture and go, you know, when a person is sick, with, by your stripes, we are healed. But I don't think it's like meaning physical healing. God can heal us physically. He has healed me physically many a times in my walk with him. I've had a lot of horrible ailments in my body. Just like uh, a week ago, I was feeling horrible and in my stomach and it was bad. Or at times where I've had extreme pressure in my head and God relieves it eventually. Um, definitely. 
I have had a degree of many times. But, you know, sometimes, like, people have, like, cancer and other things. And God doesn't, and people always quote that scripture, and, you know, but, like, he doesn't always heal physically. He doesn't always heal physically. But I think that that scripture is, like, we're healed in our soul. He restores our soul. And, you know, he, he, he gives us forget. He washes away our sin when we put our faith in him. Our sins are forgiven. And we're healed in our soul. And we're reconciled to the Father because of him. That's I just, just sharing my thoughts and reading the word. That's all. I'm not trying to teach you know I think it's okay for a sister to teach a sister but but anyways I'm just sharing my thoughts okay I'm not like some kind of you know like know it all in the Bible and just um don't like you know just just sharing my thoughts and reading Isaiah 53 maybe it's a blessing to you today all we are like sheep all we, like sheep, have gone astray. Mm -hmm. We turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. We all sinned, you know, and we all went away from choosing righteousness. You know, I think of little children, like, when they're born and when they're little, they, they, they're sensitive their hearts are sensitive to what's right but as they get older and they see the evil they start copying it and they you know they they don't have the teachings of the lord inside of them and then they end up you know just doing what everybody else is doing and let bitterness and unforgiveness grow in their heart and then then you know you just pay evil for evil and then you know you just follow the sin Um, we all like sheep have gone astray we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all I mean the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us yeah that's right of us all God put our sin on Jesus is what that is saying right there. Think about that. That this really shows what happened on the cross. Isaiah 53. It's so deep. He was oppressed and was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He, uh, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before the hear shears. Her shears, shares, is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. That's deep. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken. Verse 9, and he made his grave with the wicked. Remember the thieves on the cross? And one next to him, one on each side. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. 
because he has done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. His soul was made an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see all the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his, by this, by his knowledge shall many righteous, wow, that is so powerful. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many and he shall bear their iniquities. Jesus took our iniquities on the cross. He took the punishment for our sin. He tasted death. Somewhere else in the scriptures it says. For every man. Because God, you know, this is what a lot of people fail to recognize. God is a just God. He hates sin and it requires punishment because that's justice. So Jesus' soul was the offering for sin. Jesus took the punishment for our sin upon the, the cross. He, he tasted death for every man. He took the wrath of God upon himself on when he was on the cross. You know, I think sometimes I'm like, you know, like you just see the part with with these Roman soldiers or whatever, these people, you know, putting them on the cross, but they were actually doing God's work. Like God says all things work together for the good. Of those that love him that are called according to his purpose. Um, well, like, what Satan thought he, you know, he was like, you know, destroying Jesus. But actually, he was just leading Jesus to the cross to pay for our sins. You know, he put it in the mind of these people to crucify Jesus and, and, and put him on the cross and kill him. While Satan didn't realize he was actually fulfilling the purpose of God. Like, that's what, that's how powerful and wonderful God is. Satan does all these things to God's people and, and, and to, and to Jesus. And, you know, he's glorying and is evil and he thinks he is, you know, you know, and he's so happy and thinking, you know, he's, he's doing you know, he, Satan delights in hurting people and destroying and, and evil. He just delights in sickness. And while he thinks he's, you know, getting away with, like, yes, I did all his suffering. I like that. Um, he's actually fulfilling God's plan all the time. He just, he's so stupid. God is so much greater. You know, the devil thought, you know, he was destroying Jesus and hurting Jesus, but he was just leading Jesus on to the cross so that God could, you know, uh, so Jesus could be that soul offering for our sin. So God's wrath could be poured out on Jesus while he was on the cross. And our sin could be paid for. You know, God has to punish sin. He, it says in the scripture somewhere that he became sin who knew no sin. 
that we might be the righteousness in God. I know that it says that. I'm going to look it up. Okay, let me look this up. Yep, here it is. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I love that. Isn't that amazing? 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he hath made him, which was Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be the, made the righteousness of God in him. Oh man, when you think about what Christ really did on the cross. I'm going to get back to this. I'm going to read starting at verse 11 again. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he had poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Wow. Wow. Go check out Isaiah 53. Lord, thank you so much for what you did for me on the cross father thank you for the forgiveness of my sins god thank you that i am righteous in you although i am being sanctified and i am not perfect in my walk with you i am being sanctified in you and changed and molded and shaped as well as my sisters and brothers god in you and thank you that we're righteous in you although you're changing us every day god thank you for the fear of you god and how you've turned me from sin god from willful sin lord and and, and for the healthy fear of you god that turns me away from sin that was so pleasurable god but but it was so destructive to my soul and and to my relationship with you and just to others god it was so destructive to the soul we just don't even realize what we're doing god thank you god for your word lord thank you for what jesus did on the cross god thank you god help us draw closer to you father i pray that you would lead people to this video god and give them a deeper revelation of what you did on the cross god and and that this will really help them understand what you did so they can really be saved if they're not saved already or just give them a greater understanding if they already are saved lord thank you father for for this um thank you for the ways that you use me on youtube to help minister to others that are in dark dry places god i pray that they come to know you father that their souls are saved from weeping and gnashing of teeth in the fiery furnace of hell save them lord in jesus name amen god bless you share it with if it blessed you